This special court martial is called to order at Naval. This Air sailor is accused of illegal drug use. It's a serious charge that could mean the end of his military career, a felony conviction on his record, and possible jail time. The key piece of evidence against him is the positive result of a drug test run by the Navy Drug Screening Laboratory. It's critical that those findings are accurate. There is no room for error. The fate of this sailor's career and life depends on it. That's why the standards and specialized procedures of the three Navy drug screening labs are among the most rigorous in the world. Of course, job one at the Navy drug screening labs is to provide accurate and timely drug test results. So how can the labs ensure 100% accurate testing? It stems from the quality control and quality assurance checks and balances built into their operations. That quality control begins in the field during the urine sample collection process. Each command designates a urinalysis program coordinator, or UPC, to oversee the urine collection process. In addition, the UPC works with an observer. It's the observer's job to accompany the service member throughout the urine collection process. The observer must not lose sight of the collection bottle or take possession of the bottle, and must observe the urine leaving the body and entering the bottle. The Navy drug screening program requires collections a minimum of four times a month for a minimum of 15% of all command personnel. Social security numbers are selected at random for testing. At the end of each year, a subunit sweep is conducted for any members not tested throughout the year. To begin the collection process, the UPC asks the sailor to remove his cover, jacket and blouse. He then checks the sailor's ID card and finds the pre-printed label for that service member. The chain of custody begins when the sailor receives the bottle. The observer accompanies the sailor to the head. While walking, the sailor must hold the bottle above his right shoulder so it's visible to the observer at all times. A female observer accompanies any female sailors. A specially designed container is available for female service members. When finished, the sailor must retain custody of the sample. Place the bottle onto the crest until it's handed over to the UPC, who verifies the scrutiny of the observer. Did you observe the urine coming from the bottom? Yes, sir. The member and observer verify the information is correct and sign the ledger. The sailor also initials the bottle label. The UPC examines the bottle and places a red tamper-resistant tape over the cap and down the two sides. The UPC should retain custody of the samples at all times. When the box is full, the chain of custody form is inserted, which includes the batch number, specimen numbers, date of collection, and the sailor's social security numbers. All urine samples should be mailed to the Navy Drug Screening Lab the same day they are collected. If that's not possible, the samples must be locked in a secure area accessible only to the UPC. Objection, Foundation. Your Honor, the chain of custody is incomplete. Of course, objections are common with any legal proceeding. Unfortunately, many myths persist when it comes to extenuating circumstances that some feel could result in false positive drug screening results. Let's take a look at some of the most common misconceptions. I wasn't smoking pot, but I was at a party where other people were smoking it. That's why I tested positive. Extensive tests and published research has shown that passive inhalation of secondhand smoke from marijuana cigarettes will not result in THC metabolite levels in urine above the DOD cutoff levels. I used hemp seed salad oil and a hemp seed based shampoo before my specimen was given. That's why I tested positive for marijuana. Actually, in hemp seed oil, there is little to no THC, the psychoactive element of the cannabis plant. In fact, no hemp-based products legally obtained within the United States contain THC and therefore cannot result in a false positive marijuana screening. A sailor under my command admitted to smoking pot, yet his test came back negative. How could that happen? Time is a critical factor in detecting drug use through urinalysis. As this graph shows, once a person ingests a drug like marijuana, it takes time for traces of it to appear in his urine. The urine levels then decrease as time passes. 
If he's tested here or here, the results will be positive. But if he's tested here or here, the results will fall below the cutoff point and be negative. I have allergies and I was using a decongestant to clear my nose. That's why I tested positive for methamphetamine. This claim is not supported by scientific evidence. The GCMS technology used in the confirmation stage of the Navy's drug screening process can differentiate between the molecular structure of methamphetamine and over-the-counter medications available in the United States. I had a poppy seed bagel for breakfast. Everyone knows that poppy seeds can cause a false positive for morphine. While poppy seeds do contain a trace amount of morphine, the current cutoff level is high enough to take that into account. You would need to eat more than 100 poppy seed bagels to approach the cutoff level. I handled money the other day that probably had some cocaine residue on it. That must be why I tested positive. Cocaine cannot be absorbed through unbroken skin, and even if a cut or scrape was present, the amount absorbed would be insufficient to cause the urine level to exceed the DOD cutoff. I was at the dentist recently and he gave me a shot of lidocaine. I heard drug tests sometimes confuse that for cocaine. That must be why I tested positive. Lidocaine and cocaine are similar in name only. They are structurally unrelated molecules, which can easily be differentiated by the initial immunoassay test. Perhaps the biggest myth of all is that the Navy drug screening labs are here to target service members and ruin careers. Nothing could be further from the truth. Several quality control checks and balances are built into the operation to ensure every effort is made to support the innocence of the service member. There are three labs in the Navy's drug screening program, one in Jacksonville, one at Great Lakes, and one in San Diego. Together, they test more than two and a half million specimens every year. Each facility is overseen by up to four Medical Service Corps officers, usually PhDs, chemists, biochemists, or other scientists. They supervise approximately 70 well-qualified civilian employees. Each and every member of the technical staff undergoes rigorous training, examinations, and certifications to conduct drug testing. The labs test only urine, not blood, saliva, sweat, or hair specimens, and they do not test for the presence of alcohol or steroids. The Navy drug screening labs are committed to protecting the safety and welfare of the warfighter and service members in the Navy, Marine Corps, and Army by deterring illegal drug use through accurate and timely forensic drug testing. Security is tight, not only when accessing the overall lab facility, but within each department. Only workers authorized to be in a work center have access. All others, including visitors, must be escorted by those with access. To ensure that each laboratory is operating in accordance with high forensic standards, inspections are held three times a year by teams of scientists, JAG officers, and civilian forensic toxicologists. Additionally, the labs are challenged every month by the Division of Forensic Toxicology Armed Forces Medical Examiner System with proficiency samples. The labs must accurately report results for these specimens or lose their operating certification. Besides the drug test results, the labs provide wide-ranging support for the Department of Defense legal community. Detailed test documentation is available by an official request on command letterhead. A database of drug screening results for past years is available as needed. This database contains both negative and positive results, information that is valuable to commands and command JAGs in making decisions about administrative or legal actions against service members. For what substance? Unbiased technical experts are available to testify in administrative proceedings and courts martial. These experts are certified annually in each and every step of the laboratory's operations and testing processes, and in most cases are directly involved in verifying the individual test results. The technicians and administrators at each lab make every effort to protect the career and life of the service member. Positive results are retested twice with the latest technology and reviewed a minimum of 12 times to ensure their accuracy. But if a service member is using illegal drugs, then it's the lab's job to detect that use. The priority is to keep our armed forces in top fighting condition and to be certain service members are fit for duty and ready to support their fellow sailor, marine, soldier or airman to the best of their ability.
specimens are received at the lab from submitting commands by U.S. mail, FedEx, UPS, or are hand-delivered. The packages are organized and stored for processing on a first-come, first-served basis. The first stop is the accessioning division. Here, the packages are opened and the chain of custody paperwork is reviewed. Any discrepancies with the custody forms or with the integrity of the specimen bottles are recorded. The bottles are placed on trays in batches of 100. There are no names on the bottles, so they remain anonymous to the testing staff. Each specimen is assigned an internal LAN or laboratory accessioning number. These labels continue the strict chain of custody protocol which began the moment the specimen was collected. The LAN enables the laboratory to trace the path of each and every specimen from the moment it enters the system to the final step involving results reporting. Additionally, use of the LAN throughout the testing processes in lieu of the social security number serves to protect the identity of the service member. The finalized external and internal chain of custody documents are always made available for legal proceedings. This is also the point where internal blind quality controls are added to the mix. A blind is a urine sample that contains a known quantity of drugs. This is a critical quality control practice that assures both the equipment and lab personnel are properly identifying every potential positive sample. In addition to internal blinds, external blind quality controls, referred to as proficiency samples, are randomly shipped to the labs. Even though these samples appear to come from Navy or Marine Corps commands, they're actually sent by the Division of Forensic Toxicology Armed Forces Medical Examiner System as an external quality assurance measure. Accurate results for these external blinds are required from each lab in order to maintain DOD certification. Once batches of specimens and blind quality controls are assembled, the accessioning division technician, handling one bottle at a time, breaks the bottle seal and pours a small portion of the specimen into a test tube labeled with the LAN identifier. This test-ready portion is called an aliquot. To avoid contaminating the specimen, nothing is ever inserted into any bottle and only one bottle is opened at a time to avoid any confusion. All specimens received by the labs that contain a sufficient amount of urine are prepped for testing. Each specimen is tested for the most popular illegal drugs. The five drug types the labs test for are marijuana, cocaine, amphetamine, and methamphetamine, designer amphetamines such as ecstasy and heroin. Additionally, a random selection of batches is tested for a larger panel of drugs. Once ready for testing, the specimens are securely transferred to a screening technician. Only certified testing staff members have access to the specimen aliquots. In the screening division, each specimen is evaluated in a state-of-the-art automated analyzer. This instrument conducts a fast and cost-effective immunoassay test. Another very familiar immunoassay test is a home pregnancy test. Immunoassay testing uses antibodies to detect specific substances like illegal drugs. If a drug is present in the urine, it causes a chemical reaction, which is monitored by measuring changes in the intensity of light passing through the specimen. One way to look at this test is like a lock and key, where the lock is the antibody and the key is the drug. While many keys can fit into a lock, only one key can turn the lock and cause a chemical reaction. Each Navy lab tests thousands of urine specimens each day, but for the Navy drug screening labs, quantity does not detract from quality. Between each specimen, the immunoassay analyzer probes are rinsed thoroughly to avoid specimen cross-contamination. And quality control samples are tested before and after each batch of specimens to ensure the instrument is reading accurately from beginning to end. The test result for each specimen is thoroughly reviewed. If no drug is detected or if there is only a trace amount that falls below the Department of Defense cutoff levels, the service member's specimen will be reported negative and discarded. This is the case with approximately 99% of all tests conducted. However, each day, dozens of specimens flag positive. If a drug is detected on the initial screen test, the results are reviewed by the technician, the quality control personnel, the initial laboratory certifying official, or ILCO, and the final laboratory certifying official, or FLCO. 
If all four of these individuals verify the findings, another aliquot is poured from the original specimen bottle and tested again by immunoassay. This second immunoassay test is called the rescreen. If the drug is not detected in the rescreen, the specimen is reported negative and discarded. But if a drug is detected the second time, the results are once again verified through four levels of review. If the findings are certified, the presumptive positive specimen moves to a third level of testing. This third level is called confirmation. It is not a repeat of the immunoassay test, but a completely different and more accurate test. Here, a newly poured specimen aliquot is processed chemically and physically, isolating the drug or drug metabolites from the urine. This process is called extraction. The extracts are then tested using gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, or GCMS technology. This works by heating the specimen extracts to a gaseous state. The gaseous specimen is then carried by helium through a long tube as thin as fishing line with a specialized inner coating where the different components of the mixture, including drug molecules, are separated on the basis of mass and chemical characteristics. The drug molecules are bombarded with an electron beam which changes them into ions and breaks them into several reproducible pieces. These drug molecule fragments form a fingerprint that allows for the 100% accurate identification of the target drug. Every drug molecule that enters the mass spectrometer fragments in the same unique and predictable fashion. The results of this test are always 100% accurate. If the specimen tests negative, the service member's specimen is deemed negative and discarded. If it tests positive for a third time, the results are once again validated through four levels of review. This means that every confirmed positive test result is reviewed for accuracy a minimum of 12 times before it is sent to the service member's commanding officer. Positive results are uploaded to a secure website for review by the service member's commanding officer. The CO has three choices, an administrative board hearing, a court-martial, or if the positive results were caused by a legal documented prescription, the positive result is noted as attributed to the medication. Right, so you said 44 nanograms per milliliter? Yes. And so the laboratory certifying officials are available to consult with the CO, the JAG prosecutor, and the defense attorney or board recorder, as well as testify at legal and administrative proceedings to verify and explain the laboratory's findings. Delivery of the final report falls to the Support Services Department. Using the LAN ID system, they track the chain of custody for each specimen and document and maintain test results. They also provide legal documents to submitting commands to include summary reports used for administrative boards and documentation packets used for courts martial, as well as discovery responses and technical reviews and statements. They are always willing and able to provide answers to questions about drug test results. In short, they are the lead customer service representatives at the Navy Drug Screening Labs. And that's the focus at each of the three Navy Drug Screening Labs, customer service. They're ready to back up and verify their findings in support of the fleet, Marine Corps, Army, and military legal community every day.